Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020, Mother's Day, and it's 11.11 a.m. here in Pasadena, California. So here's the update for the last uh, week. A couple things. Uh, I know a lot of attention has been put on DraftKings IPO. Again, I'd like to point out this is a gambling company, a gambling company. That is actually how it is described in their profile. Back to the Wire Act again. The Wire Act is still in place. Uh, if it's okay to float a federally prohibited business, which is still the case with the Wire Act, uh, then why not cannabis IPOs in the U.S. markets? Why do they go to Canada to list their shares if they can list them here when these are the deepest markets in the world? So if it's okay to have a gambling company go public on the U.S. markets, then by the same extension, it should be okay for a cannabis company, or any other prohibited, why not running guns or maybe assassins for hire, um, you know, float a, float a public company to do those things. There's no difference. You either have laws or you don't have laws. So this Friday, um, you're going to see the non-ratings, uh, the non-earnings report uh, from DraftKings. They've been doing nothing but bleeding cash from day one. You can look at their profile on Yahoo Finance and see uh, as gr gross rises, losses rise, uh, I don't know how that math works out. Uh, the more, the, not only does the, the amount of the loss increase, but the rate of the loss increases as well. So uh, I think this kind of ridiculous garbage that goes on these days in our financial system is why we find ourselves in these continual messes. Uh, with crashes every few years. We don't seem to be able to create a stable economy anymore because it's all full of toxic waste. Um, derivatives on derivatives, crypto derivatives, derivatives on cryptos. I mean, it's just trash upon trash upon trash. So regulators, do your damn jobs. Go back and read your charter. Capital formation, investor protection, okay? Read your charter. You're not doing a very good job. These continuous crashes of the marketplace is wiping out the economies every few years. I mean, that's, you don't know what you're doing. So it was cute that uh, DraftKings uh, had a friendly ratings agency that I've never heard of say that their price target was $25 and then promptly drive the price to $25 and get all the talking heads talking about it. It's, I mean, it's just manipulation upon manipulation, upon manipulation, upon manipulation. But it's a cute trick. Uh, the price didn't sustain there, and we'll see how you do when your non-ratings report comes out this Friday, the 15th of May. Buffett, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway lost $50 billion in the first quarter of 2020. That is really uh, an incredible surprise. I mean, without a doubt, this, this man knows what he's doing, but I think that demonstrates the severity of the problem. Um, where I break with him is he just thinks that everything is going to be fine. I don't agree with that at all. I think he's got that wrong. Um, this is not going to be a U-shaped recovery. There, there's no case for that. Um, that's just hopefulness. Uh, there's the, the, the mechanics of how spending restarts. Uh, in very basic terms, there's no the money is not there to spend um, because everybody's... <laughs> Uh, either, you know, almost everybody has reduction in their earnings if they're lucky. Uh, if they have their existing earnings levels, they're very fortunate, but most are dealing with reduced earnings or no earnings and a lot of fear in the marketplace. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bode well for consumer spending to return in any meaningful way beyond the essentials, which are quite literally at this point uh, food, housing, and uh, cleaning supplies, right, and things from grocery stores and entertainment, uh, you know, lots of streaming. Sports falls into that category, and, and again, I think that's why uh, any, any case for, for sports-related materials or entertainment-related offerings and materials is, is pretty much recession-proof, depression-proof. People tend to flee toward those things in times of distress. So, Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think that it's going to be uh, a sharp, I, in fact, it's going to be many years um, of getting out of this just because of the psychology of it all and, 
and the inner mechanics of what it will take to to return the economy to anything looking like normal. Uh, we've had a uh, the largest jump in open rates and click rates over the communications that I've seen sent out that I've seen since I've been tracking it. Um, this just is an extension of I do you know see that more more people are paying attention to what we're doing on our mailing lists. Um, you know that's just the fact of it. The, the numbers clearly kind of show that uh, three trillion in borrowing this quarter. Uh, from from the U.S. government, three trillion. Just to put that in perspective, that is three times the entire uh, yearly uh, deficit from last year. And this money is printed out of thin air, so it's going right to the deficit and the debt. Three trillion in a quarter. It's just it's a phenomenal. That's a uh, trillion dollars a month. Um, Elon uh, getting rid of his stuff. Uh, remember that my my longest friend in the world works um, very close to him. Uh, one of the first employees in in, in SpaceX. Um, that's just you know it's real. Uh, he's really doing that. I think the bigger attention is uh, on his pitching a fit over the lockdowns. Uh, for all you California haters out there, don't get your panties in a wad because. He's got a very substantial investment in California. Um, this is a bluffing job. I would bet uh, that it's a bluffing job. It, to, to pull out of here would be extremely expensive on so many levels. Uh, he's just pitching a fit because he doesn't like to be told what to do. And, you know, the lockdown isn't negatively affecting uh, his ventures as it is everybody's ventures. But I would be very, very surprised to see anything come of that. Um, you can be sure that the California government is going to get get in contact with him. I'm sure they already are uh, to to work this out. So California's haters are going to hate. That's just how it's always been. It's been that way since I was a child. So I don't expect anything different. Lots of bankruptcies, without a doubt. This is going to be the biggest flow of bank bankruptcies I've seen in my lifetime. Um, I'm not a study of the Great Depression in particular, but uh, I would be surprised if it doesn't surpass that just because the economy is much larger and it's also much more fragile. It's not based on manufacturing and the kinds of things that it was um, for the longest time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, just about everything is going to be wiped out and restarted. That's that's how it looks to me. We received uh, two... Uh, formal com uh, completions of the league intake form uh, on the 7th, uh, which is uh, the seventh, which is last week, uh, two days after the five year anniversary of when um, when I got here to work full time with Ace on ASM, just kind of interesting timing. Uh, two of them on the same day, which we're uh, we're working through um, setting up the video conferences and, and the details, but. They're not uh, jokes. They're not somebody messing around. They're real. Um, SEC has uh, re relaxed the crowdfunding rules. Uh, this is not particularly, um, doesn't really particularly deal with our present funding situation so much as just the regulatory environment in which we find ourselves, which helps with the, um, the order book and the actual doing of the, of the league fundraises. Because what we're going to do is we're not going to ask permission. We're, we, we've had our no action letter pending now for more than four years. We're going to append to that and we're going to put it out as a notice, um, just like we did when we turned the pilot market on. And as these rules relax, it, it, it makes our case easier for, uh, for raising money. But look, it comes down to this. If we can show that we can step into the gap uh, and, and rescue sports leagues out of bankruptcy or prevent them from going into bankruptcy, that is the whole need case that we need to make to achieve regulation. So just the environment getting loosened up around us means less issues with enforcement and just a, a smoother ride for us in getting really what it's all about. For, for us, it is about getting that first league fundraise done and publicize the hell out of it. That's really, that's the game winner for us because I know from that point, the story will spread. It's not going to take a lot of work for it to spread. And then we will be in the position of, of vetting um, league intakes rather than searching for them. 
and just the market conditions continue to just bring the buyers, our buyers basically to the door because uh, it's starting to sink in that this is not going away anytime soon, um, regardless of the political nonsense that's going on. It's just, it's not, you're not going to be able to hide refrigerated trucks full of dead bodies. It's, it's, that's a fact that's going to be very stubborn and, and, and not going to be able to get rid of it. So they're also working on relaxing the exempt rules, the rules for exempt offerings. That's not done yet, but that's also going to be helpful. Um, I'm not, in terms of uh, providing liquidity to our, to our shareholders, which admittedly is, is long overdue, uh, and raising new capital, that's really not my concern here. Um, the fact that the DraftKings went off and did this cheater IPO and all of that just makes it even easier for us to do, but that's putting the cart before the horse. What we have to do is get the, get the product proven in the marketplace by raising funds for a league in distress, which is everybody at this point, um, then that, that, that process of, of getting uh, new capital in and allowing people to cash out is secondary to that. I really don't see the issue with that part of it. Um, and and the, the mechanisms for doing it are growing and the regulatory market is, uh, environment is loosening. So, but that's getting things in reverse. First, first things first, order book is first. Um, Sports share shipments. So just a quick comment here. I don't want anybody to think I forgot. Um, I know I bring this up every couple of weeks. We're still on uh, lockdown till May 31st. We'll see if that extends. I think it will, at least a couple of weeks uh, beyond that. At, at the point that that is uh, no longer the case is when I'll pile everything up because the post office doesn't want any uh, unnecessary traffic, uh, just bare minimum stuff. So not forgotten. Um, you know, all of the orders, I, I was nearly completed producing when the lockdown went into place. And there's a few more I have to finish. Uh, and there are no more. That site was shut down a month, uh, month ago, I think. Uh, and then I'll get those out to you guys uh, that, that uh, I owe them to. So not forgotten. And again, thank you for participating in that. It kept us funded from the summer of last year. Uh, so that's that. Disney profit down 91%. That's, again, a mind-blowing. That just tells you the environment that we're in. I mean, Disney has some of the smartest people in the world there. So uh, they got caught off guard here with this. Uh, Bill Murray's comments uh, on Warren Buffett's shareholder meeting. I just, I find it entertaining that that Bill Murray would get involved and in, in, uh, act as an economist or play the role. Uh, you know, in this day and age, why not? You know, Bill Murray, chief economist. I mean, why not? I mean, it's, there's lesser talented people in the government presently. So a um, few stories circulating at very high level, fairly high level about uh, the legal profession and lawyers scrambling around for work and being all sad. And, you know, I have no love loss for that profession or whatever you want to call it. I'd call it a scam, really. Um, so, you know, turnabout is hell, isn't it? So, so all of the grief that you guys cause humanity uh, it comes back on you now. That's kind of how, how things work. And I'm dead serious about once ASM is offloaded out of my life, I'm so, I'm so convinced that nothing is coming out of the legal profession but delays. Um, all the legal profession does is act as a parasite and a predator on, on, the, on the system. Parasites and predators, that's all you have. I say you get rid of the parasites and the predators and you're going to have a lot better system. And software at, the, at this day and age is so advanced that creating AI, an AI system, and actually this stuff is already in, in process out there. I know several people working on it, that you can essentially replace almost the entire legal profession with uh, a cloud software project, a cloud software platform. Uh, BD, uh, Bitcoin halving, so that's the latest uh, scam suck people in. Again, I'd like to point out that the only place nearby that I can get Bitcoins as in a cash advance shop. Uh, anybody that knows anything about cash advance shops knows their absolute ripoffs and, and suck people into endless debt cycles. So uh, having, that's the big thing. Apparently there was some big crash. I mean, there's a crash every couple of days. Uh, they've been desperately pumping it to 10,000 and, and hyping it in the media. And I just like to remind anybody who thinks that this is real that the control of the price of Bitcoin is in the hands of a very tiny number of wallets that's been well established. So if you walk into that, you're on your own. It's a total, I mean, wild west, hold your 
wallet close to your body, pull out your pistol kind of thing. If that's what you want to involve in, if money's all you care about and that makes your life go around and you want to try to trade it and then get your money out, good luck. As far as any productive use, zero. Okay. It has no productive use in the economy. It is not producing anything. It is the source of nothing but scandal. Um, I call it the coronavirus of the financial system, and I, I won't back off of that position. That's exactly what it is, is the coronavirus of the financial system. So the having is their latest scam to suck people in. Um, I'm going to be putting out a new, another pitch to, to the league, uh, the, the league list that I collected from LinkedIn. I'm also going to expand it, start farming again for more. Um, using the Green New Deal angle, which is the subtitle of the uh, Sports Boat Manifesto. There's a lot of talk about that. Um, I, think that is, uh, I think that message fits perfectly now. I think that uh, the, the green in this context means sustainability, uh, more than talking about like solar, so not, not that. Green in terms of being sustainable, creating a sustainable economy. Um, and I do, I totally, I mean, that's the whole idea behind the new sports economy. And the whole thing is that building a, building a, a new economy around sports is sustainable. So that's the context of green, um, slowing things down. So I, I think that people are not realizing yet that the velocity of business has slowed down. And, and actually I think this is much needed. One of the things that I really liked about living in Costa Rica was the pace, um, not all the racing around and craziness that you have to deal with in, in, in the Western countries, and especially up in this country, I think, particularly. Um, I don't think that's bad. I think bringing the pace down is, I mean, what are you doing, racing to your grave? I mean, that was actually something that was said to me by uh, one of the ladies that's the family matriarch uh, of the, um, uh, the South Dakota trip, the, uh, goodness, Shame on me for remembering the, the, the place. Uh, the Indian monument there. Um, she's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the principal parties there. And, and that was what she said is that what are, what's the racing all about? I mean, what's the point of racing around? Are you just racing to see how fast you can get into the grave? It's a lot of, I mean, that's a valid thing if you think that through. Um, this whole language, which I call the disasterification of our language, I mean, bomb cyclones, murder hornets, I mean, do we really need that? I mean, is that necessary to get clicks or whatever? I mean, come on, guys, be more responsible than that. I mean, media types, I mean, you know that people are already dealing with enough stuff. They don't need that. Um, Canadian Football League, we have a warm approach uh, through Paul uh, to see if they're interested. They're actually not crashed, but they're crashing uh, to see if they want to hear about what we've got here. Uh, this is more of a hedge to prevent crash than to pull out of, um, of a crash. XFL, so, so there's two main uh, major league approaches we're making right now. The CFL as a hedge against failure and the XFL um, as a rescue out of bankruptcy because they're in bankruptcy now. And um, I've added them into my LinkedIn, sent out LinkedIn requests this weekend, and I'm already getting um, acceptances from both of those leagues in, in the C-suite, people in the C-suite. So we're going to be approaching them uh, with formal proposals uh, to see if they want to hear about what we have here. Uh, again, I mean, this is shooting for the moon, especially with, um, you know, with the CFL. I think it's, it's probably shooting for the moon even more because they're not dead yet. XFL's dead twice. So it's sort of a what do you have to lose kind of question. Um, in terms of being able to do the job, I'm confident that we can, the system will create a third instance of the engine. Remember that we have the learning market, the pilot market, and then the final regulator or exempt market is the last stage. So this would be the third stage, um, completely separate banking system, completely set up with accountants and controllers and all that proper stuff. Um, one dollar, one dollar in. It's all represented, not fractional, nothing like that. No bonus margin. Um, I believe, you know, the system because it's built on on Microsoft's uh, Azure platform. It will, uh, it's going to support whatever we throw at it because it'll auto scale up to whatever's necessary. I mean, it's the entire Microsoft cloud. So that's not the issue. The issue is uh, going to be the really the banking. I mean. Uh, if they can activate their fan base, which they, they can through 
direct approaches, emails, and through the media. And if people can go to the site and buy, the real question is uh, the financial integrity behind it. So, you know, if our bank has $50 million show up on a Thursday, we're going to have a problem. So it's really that kind of question. Um, there will be support issues and stuff, but I've seen already just through the through all the previous iterations of the market that especially now that we we have game opening and closing automated, um, that is is not where the bind is. Yes, you're going to need uh, so software. I'm sorry, uh, support people, but really it comes down to banking and regulatory infrastructure. Um, banking is more just make sure that we get all of the right stuff in place and we don't surprise the bankers with what you know the cash flows and all that stuff. I think that's the key. Regulatory side, once again, because of this rescue operation and really what we just, we want to prove that we can do it. Um, again, I'm just flabbergasted by the fact that we find ourselves in this moment where I said we just needed to find one rescue and now the whole market needs a rescue. So we're going we're gonna to find somebody that's going to take it. Again, I have two official completed forms in just on, in one day uh, from, from last week. So that's that. Um, NFL schedule has been released. I think, uh, yeah, they're they're going to proceed unless something. It's more likely than not that that will proceed. There are some pretty serious things that have to be dealt with quickly in terms of testing and tracing and all that. It will be fanless in the stands, um, you know. But I think it's probably seventy five percent chance or greater that they will be able to adhere to that schedule maybe push it a little bit if, if absolutely necessary, but probably not. Baseball, I think, is still dreaming, uh, talking about doing this um, in July, you know, like July 4th or so. I don't, I just don't, I don't think so. I, I would be positively, just because the timeline is so short now that, uh, you know, you're talking under 60 days or roughly 60 days, a little under 60 days. I mean, the protocol is necessary. It's not that you can't play games in stands and such, it's that you you the protocols of keeping everybody safe that's involved with the you know the players and the all the pieces of of the machinery just to play the game on the field. I mean, you have White House Secret Service people and staff members getting COVID now, so that's the tightest that's the tightest control medical protocol on the planet, and they can't do it. So. The players are not in the same way that, that Ace is working on some ideas here to restart the studio business. You're going to have the same kind of thing. These high-performing uh, people that are highly paid, they're not going to go to an into an environment where there's a danger. Uh, so I think just that part is the bind, is to, is to be sure that they they can create a safe environment uh, for the for the players and in, in entertainment in the entertain entertainment business and for the actors and, and all the supporting you know all the people involved there it's the same problem so um, yeah I think I think baseball is uh, the fall I think is is about as close as it gets with fanless games um, where you have players I know NASCAR is uh, is but that's people in metal boxes going around in a circle that's not the same thing as a bunch of people crashing into each other. Um, so, uh, NFL, yes, more than likely, maybe schedule gets pushed a bit, uh, baseball. Um, yeah, I, I'm not seeing that. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, contributor list. So yes, I'm seeing for the first time in a very long time, uh, new people that are, uh, are supporting our, our, our mission through, through the various me mechanisms that I've put out. Uh, that's good to see the list is growing, which is great. First time in a long time. 14.7% uh, unemployment, worse since the Great Depression. That number is way underreported. Um, I would put it now at somewhere between 25 and 30%. Um, it's very easy to get there. 70% um, of gig workers are out of jobs, and they make up half the economy. So do that math. That's 35% by itself. So I'm, I'm saying that they're they're somewhere, but they're about off by about 100%, uh, and and they're they're very much undercounting this number. Uh, it's bad, and it's as bad as it's been since the Great Depression. It's actually going to eclipse it in, in, in some ways. Um, we're talking about this will be the next uh, conference call, which I do see we're going to – we skipped two weeks. really wasn't a reason for it. We were doing everything by email. Uh, we'll do one this coming Wednesday. It's time to talk. Uh, we need to talk about um, a number of things. 
these these deals that are in process, XFL, CFL, the approaches we're making there. Um, I want to talk about pitching our story into the media now rather than waiting for the, the, the first deal to come out. I think it, we've got a good enough footprint from prior coverage, and we also have, uh, through Hero Club, they have a PR uh, agency as, the, as a division. And I know that they will help us out for a billing later, you know, if we can't afford it all right now. So I think we need to talk about a, a PR campaign. Um, incidentally, Chad is Chad Deal's taken over that role. Uh, Jason was in that role of, of a number of roles. It's been dormant because we really haven't had any activity. But we've officially put Chad Deal in that role. Uh, so he'll be directing the media uh, from our side here. So that's uh, something to know. So I, I think we're going to talk that out on the on the Wednesday call to see if we want to go ahead and proceed with um, with that and 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 get this media story started now because if we get it started now, obviously it's going to feed us leads, right? It's going to feed us um, uh, more people that are going to be interested, and then then when they actually fund, then that's a follow on story. So there's some strategic things to think about there, but I'm I'm leaning on the side that we should get it started sooner rather than later. Um, working on some angles, um, just messaging angles, ASM is the cure for sports, um, is the vaccine for sports, you know, this kind of thing, um, to test that message. I think we're going to stay away from COVID-19 specifically and just, I think I, the most likely candidate for the next test is ASM is the cure for sports. We're going to try that out. Um, on, on May 9th, which was what, yesterday? The total combined uh, market cap between the pilot market and the learning market uh, went over $20 billion. No, that's not from any internal, no, nobody inside the company here uh, trades on there. That's against the rules. Nobody moved the number. It moved itself uh, from the activity of traders. So uh, that's a new record. Pin Gaming's numbers. So Pin Gaming's numbers suck. All the gambling companies' numbers suck. Uh, they're going to suck. They're, that's actually legacy reporting. That's only covering a little bit of this turn down. Wait till you see the second quarter numbers. If you think the first quarter numbers were bad, wait till you see the second quarter numbers. The numbers suck across the board, and it's not going to get better anytime soon. In fact, it's not going to get better, period. Um, yeah, one well-publicized deal. We get one. We pull XFL out of bankruptcy, and we're going to put a freeze on the gambling march. Mark my words. Because the proposition for the leagues is so far superior to what they're dealing with with the gambling that all we have to do is get out there and show that we have it. We have something here that works better and doesn't have the downside. And they're absolutely, and they know it, there absolutely is downside with the gambling stuff. It is absolutely nonsensical to say otherwise. It's so easily to, easy to document. You have contrasting and conflicting uh, uh, motivations and just it's it's crap. So it's it's horse and buggy nonsense. We have a much, much, much superior option that aligns all the interests all going the same direction. We just need to show it. And we show it that it's not that they're going to back off instantly, but it will put a huge, because right now there's nothing to be had from it. Okay, so we step into this gap and show what we have, then then why proceed with that? Why would you do that? I mean, there's nothing to be had. If we have the superior option, they're, they're going to go with the superior option. They just don't, they haven't seen it demonstrated live in the marketplace, and that's our responsibility here. So one deal, and we'll drive a, heart, a stake through the heart of it. You watch. Um, and then Trump just said we need sports. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. Maybe you guys ought to listen to us this time. I mean... You know, pay attention. We we have we have the answer here. The new sports economy. That whole concept now is the moment. So, for one time in very rare, I'm agreeing with you. That's right. We need sports investment. We need the new sports economy, not sports gambling. Okay, don't don't take the money a little bit of money away that that everybody has. First of all, the appetite. Back to that. It's already been shown in Macau. You open the door back up, nobody shows up, okay? It's not going to be a different story in Vegas. Sorry, it's not. It's just not. Watch, okay? Replay this. You're going to see. Whenever they decide to turn it on, nobody's going to show up. The whole concept of wearing a medical mask 
into a casino is just absurd. And what, smoke a cigarette under and drink? I mean, it's just, that's like doing that. I mean, it just, none of that makes any sense to the public. And they're not going to have the money for it. So you'll see. Anyway, uh, call, contact, email, whatever, your mom, Mother's Day. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for your time. And I will update you again next Sunday. Bye now.